How to survive the purge. Hello, citizens. Welcome to Purge Night. I would solo in the purge. Here's my strategy. I'm going to tell you right now, this video is going to be sh Here's how you survive the purge. Dig a hole in the ground and sit in the hole. Cover the hole up and sit there for 12 hours. No one will find you. Five days before the purge, dig a hole, put a cover over the hole, and sit there. Boom. Problem solved. Right. How are you going to breathe? You poke a hole in the top. Dumbass. Now it's time to vent all that rage and- I'm not even gonna explain the purge. If you don't know what the purge is, figure it the f*** out. You've been living under a rock. Frustration you've been storing up over the last year. It's time to purge. So, you're caught up in the modern dystopia that is the new Founding Fathers of America's version of the good old US of A. And it's March 21st, Purge Night. How do you survive the purge without the benefit of high-powered military weaponry? is nothing more than a simple, normal, everyday Joe. First, let's recap the history of the Purge briefly. Oh, Originally, he's going to explain it. The Purge is no rules at all. The Purge is there's one night in the United States where you can murder anybody but high people in the government. That's it. You can commit any crime. It started as a grand social experiment on Staten Island by the ruling political party, the new Founding Fathers of America. The Purge quickly grew to be a national event. And I hate, I, I don't like the movie The Purge. I like the movie The Purge because I think the idea is interesting. But I think how they play out that idea is very bad. Because I think the first, I, I think they try to explain it in later movies when they do like, they show the movie of The First Purge where people don't want to participate but they end up doing anyway. But like if The Purge was actually real and everyone genuinely participated, the entire country would fall apart. You have 24 hours to commit any crime you wanted. If everyone genuinely participated, every building would be in shambles. Like, you're not going to rebuild from that. It wouldn't be beneficial in any way. And people would still commit crimes. Now, every March 21st, all crime. If you stab somebody during the person, they die after it, it ends. Will the person be convicted for murder? No, because you committed the crime during the purge. Time is legalized for 12 hours of absolute. Oh, it's only 12 hours? I thought it was 24. 12 hours, bitch? That's not hard to survive. Fucking hide in a hole. Demonium and mayhem. But it's not just the everyday citizen getting in on the mass murdering. Because in order to keep up casualty figures, Purge Night is routinely supplemented by government kill squads, whose sole purpose it is to murder as many people as possible. But wait, you thought that Purge Night was about people venting their criminal anger and frustration out? so that the rest of the year you could live a peaceful, law-abiding life. Well, no, because it turns out that the new Founding Fathers of America are less interested in making America a great place to live and more interested in preserving the interests of the rich and powerful. Purge Night's real purpose isn't to help keep American crime down. It's actually to rid the United States of minorities and poor people. Hence, the government kill squads. But there will always, always be poor people. That makes no sense. For a capitalistic society to work, you, like, it, it, or for an American capitalistic society to work, you need poor people. If you kill the poor people, other people will just become poor because they need to take their jobs. If you kill everybody that works the shitty jobs, then there's no one to work the shitty jobs. And then the economy collapses. The fuck? So how are you going to survive class warfare in its most literal form? First, you have to have a plan for purging. What crime would what? I commit during the purge? Tax evasion. Well, I wouldn't be able to commit tax evasion because it's not on tax day. What cover? What crime would I commit during the purge? I would promote a crypto scam. <laughs> I would promo a crypto scam. In that 12-hour phase, I would promo a crypto scam. Melting into a 12-hour apocalypse is a great way to get yourself killed. So you better I'll promo have a good squid coin. <laughs> with multiple contingencies to keep you alive. Your plan should include a place to shelter and how to get there in case you're running late on purge night and get caught out in the open. You should have both multiple avenues of approach to your shelter as well as multiple avenues of escape in case your shelter is breached. If you're sheltering at home, things like steel plates over windows and thick security doors will help keep out even the most determined purgers. But finding alternative, more secure shelter is probably your best bet. Places like old mine tunnels, abandoned military structures, and even Bitch, where am I gonna find an old mine tunnel, you dumbass? This is the worst, dude, this is so fucking stupid. Abandoned military bases, old mine tunnels. Where the fuck am I gonna find that? And even if you do, you know how many people are gonna be there also trying to stay safe and then they're gonna fucking kill each other? Stupid. Watch Matt Pat's video on it? Yeah, I'll, I'd rather watch Matt Pat's video on it. It's probably even worse. <laughs> 
Oh, well, fucking shit, dude. Get a different picture of yourself, Matt Pat. It pisses me off, bro. You, every video for the last six years, it's this one picture of you where you're like this. And you just fucking move the picture and put eyes on it. Fucking get a different picture. You don't even look like that anymore, Matt Pat. That you're fucking like seven years older than this photo. Time for the purge. For the next 12 hours, all crime is legal. I'm so excited. This is going to be the perfect night. Ooh, what do you have planned? Looting? Murder? <laughs> What? No, I'm gonna pirate episodes of Great British Baking Show and then tinker with the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> this is why I don't like MatPat videos. Heck, if there's time, we can even maybe steal the recipe for Diet Coke and be in bed by 11. <laughs> Shut up, MatPat. Get into the fucking video. That does sound like the perfect night. It does. Clink. <laughs> Fuck. Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. The show. If that you think about it, Matt Pat was the first PNG YouTuber. No, he wasn't. I think he's the first majorly successful one. He's not the first PNG YouTuber. Strives to purge every ounce of fun and whimsy from all the movies that you love. Today we're taking a stab at the Purge franchise, which, if you haven't seen, is actually really interesting in terms of premise. It's set in an alternate future where Americans are entitled to 12 hours of purging every year. Chat, what crime would you commit? In the purge i don't dude i don't i, I wouldn't even like other than like yeah pro, promoting a crypto scam <laughs> like other than that i just wouldn't want i don't know i would legalize nuclear bomb all crime in the u.s is legal lasting until 7 a.m the following morning commencing at the siren any and all crime including murder will be legal for 12 continuous hours and as you might expect the purge franchise really digs in exploring all sorts of creative crimes that people might choose to commit if i would use aim bot and valorant or indeed no law <laughs> yo i guarantee you if the purge was real all valorant would be for those 12 hours is aimbot <laughs> or some shit wait no but that's not even illegal I, I i i just think that they wouldn't ban you because people in the valorant fucking community would be more focused on not dying so i don't think they would ban people for using aimbot Pause for the night just kidding it is just a bunch of killing murder 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 sure there's a bit of vandalism and looting sprinkled in for flavor but come on you're telling me that all crime is legal for 12 hours and nobody the one the one thing that is also incredibly miss uh like in incredibly like ugh, skewed in the purge is they are they don't really show anything involving grape without the g and most definitely if the purge was real a lot of that would occur and i don't think they included that in the movie because if they had people wouldn't want to watch it because it would be extremely uncomfortable because if the purge actually existed, there would be a lot of uh, sexual assault crimes. Like, no, I, I, that, that's also another reason why they would never do it is because it, it would just ruin people's lives. With it, where's all your creativity, people? Rigged gambling, hacking, insider trading? Why are we not following the people who are trying to make themselves filthy, stinking rich? With all this focus on murder and petty looting, you're wasting- Imagine how many people would try to kill Jeff Bezos. I just find that shit, as if, if, if the purge was real, that shit would be on fucking lock for them. Such a cool premise. You have 12 hours each year to change your life or heck, improve the lives of your family, friends, society itself, and you use it all to smash a few windows? Think big picture here, people. So that, loyal theorists, is our question today. Not how to survive- I do think they were creative in the movie. Especially the part where other people from countries, from like different countries, would come to the United States for the purge to commit crimes. I thought that was very interesting. But I think the actual movie itself is just like, it's so unrealistic. It, it would never happen. But I do think that was cool where it was like people from like Spain coming over just to like kill people and shit like that. I have the purge. But how you win the purge? What is the best use of that 12 hour window? Because let's face oh, it. Oh, is Matt Pack going to tell me how to commit crimes? The infographics show is telling me how to survive. Matt Pat's gonna tell me how to profit off the purge. Yes! Yes, Matt Pat! Yeah, yes, Matt Pat, tell me how to fucking get my profits up. The film series is starting to feel more and more possible every day, and we need to be prepared.
You know what, I'm gonna be honest. When I first embarked on this thought experiment, I assumed that developing the perfect purge strategy would be pretty darn easy. All I had to do was figure out what high yield crimes would be safely carried out in one night, hire some hackers You or know what how secured banks would be on purge night though? Like you would not, everybody always says, oh, I'm gonna rob a bank. You know how fucking secured they would be or they would just move the money somewhere else the day before. Like it's just, a, it's an easy fix and then profit. But when you actually start thinking through the logistics of this stuff, things actually get a lot more complicated. Because remember, when all crime is legal, it's legal for everyone. That becomes a two-way street. Say, for instance, you figure out a way to cheat a casino and you want to cash in. A few loaded dice or a stacked deck in your hand sounds like a fun and profit. Going to a casino on the purge night seems like such a bad idea. That's how you get shot in the fucking face. The, I, the casino wouldn't even be open, Matt, Pat. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, way to spend the purge night, right? No problem. Well, yes, big problem. For those 12 hours, not only can you cheat the casino, the casino is legally allowed to rig the game against you. And with them controlling- But no one's gonna go to a casino. On the cards, the deck is definitely stacked against you. Here's another one. Say you want to rob a bank vault. Well, you're gonna need associates for your heist. But make sure that you trust those guys since, you know, they can always pull a dark night and just off you at the end of the that evening is so and take the fast. loot for themselves. You it's can't trust anybody. It would be a solo crime. Something that we see in the Purge movies. Remember how well it works when criminals work with other criminals in those films? Not super great. But then again, that might be the least of your worries considering that the bank guards themselves are suddenly legally able to straight up murder you. Again, it's no rules for everyone. When developing the perfect Purge strategy, you also have to remember that the Purge is a yearly event. So you don't want be what do you think Biden would do? Nothing. Because the idea of the um the purge is that people of like higher political power aren't allowed to be harmed and they wouldn't do anything. The crime that's gonna screw someone over and then be traced back to you since a year from now it's gonna leave a big old target on your back. Market manipulation, insider trading, identity theft, embezzlement, these can all be traced back to you because they're being done online. Committing these sorts of crimes during the purge doesn't really offer you that much additional cover than any other day of the year. Sure, the U.S. government might choose not to prosecute you since your crime occurred during that window of opportunity, but does that really matter when you've stolen a ton of money from presumably wealthy, well-connected, powerful people? Come next year's purge, you could find yourself at the receipt. Oh, yeah. If you fuck people over, they're just gonna kill you next year. Oh, that's ass. No, you just... No, this is what you do. This is what you do. You commit that crime, you do embezzlement, you steal a bunch of money, and then you never live in the United States again. And then you move to Canada. You move to Quebec. Extremely well-funded vigilante justice. Or to demonstrate one last I would rush my Town Hall 10 Clash of Clans base. <laughs> That's that's a crime. That is a crime. Rushing a, rushing a Town Hall 10 base is a crime. I would not upgrade my walls completely before I went to Town Hall 10. I would... I would rush, I would keep my walls two levels below what they should be. Time counterfeiting US currency. Or you have a bunch of counterfeit currency and you want to use it. Great! It's a plan that literally is printing money. But you spending that cash is actually going to happen outside of the purge window. Meaning that once again, you're a criminal. Try to deposit it in a bank? Too bad, you can't. It's too late in the day. And honestly, the bank doesn't have to do it. Legally, they're not responsible for that. And even if you could do any of this, there's one other layer that we have to take into account here. Sure, national laws may be suspended, but what about international laws? U.S. laws may turn a blind eye for 12 hours, but international laws won't. The 1929 Geneva Convention made the counterfeiting of any currency illegal in every country. So even if you didn't technically do anything illegal in the U.S., you'd still be- Matt, Pat, who the fuck would counterfeit U.S. currency on the purge night? This is all- I know this is stupid. We don't need to go over this the law in a ton of other countries. And come 7 a.m. the next morning, the U.S.'s extradition treaties are back in effect. International money laundering, tax evasion schemes, big old nopes there too. So at this point, I feel like I should pause and offer an apology to James DeMonico, the writer, director, and producer of The Purge. Before I began researching this topic, I figured The Purge franchise was, well, I thought it was kind of dumb. Fun? Yeah, absolutely, but definitely dumb. Just mindless. The first Purge was so annoying. The kid in 
the first purge? Oh my god, bro. He fucking let everybody in. He was like that moral guy, and then he got everybody fucking killed. Some dumbass. Corn fodder. I'll admit it, the fact that all the purge characters pretty much stuck to was murder just kind of felt cheap. It's like they weren't behaving like real people would for in this the scenario. And instead, we're just doing a bunch of fun-to-watch crimes for no other reason than they were in a violent horror movie. It felt like lazy writing, and I was oh so ready to poke holes in the wishy-washy legalese of it all with hypotheticals like, what if you shoot someone at 6.59 but they don't die until 7.01? Will the government still- That's what somebody in my chat said. That's what somebody in my chat said if you stab somebody and they don't die until after. Execute you then, or what if you're caught in possession of stolen property the day after the purge? What and it's a rough 12 hours, right? It's a rough 12 hours. In one of the scenes in the purge, uh, there's a part where the time hits like 7 a.m., right? And it's over. And people were fighting, and they see that it hit 7 a.m., and they just stop fighting. But no one's gonna know that you killed someone at 7.01, right? Um, <laughs> literally. Like, it's, what, what the fuck? You're gonna sit there? You're gonna sit there? Oh, it's 7 o'clock. I was about to shoot you in the face, but I can't now. No one's around you guys. You could still kill somebody. I didn't like that part of the movie. And, but what I came to realize is that it's all fairly simple. None of that matters. Whether or not the government's gonna prosecute you for crimes that occur outside that 12-hour window hardly matters because the true judgment and the true threat is ultimately coming from your fellow man. The people that you've wronged will have a chance to get even on March 21st the following year. Or there's always the Why is it on March 21st? How did they pick that day specifically for the purge? Is that is that a is that a is that like a, a a holiday of some sorts? Why March 21st? National authorities who'd like to get even as well. So to truly win the purge, we need a highly profitable crime that can be over and done with within that 12-hour window. A crime that isn't governed by international law and doesn't rely on us screwing over other people or leave us open to the reverse. Or if we are taking advantage of someone they can't be left alive to know about it. So at this point, you're probably Matt Pat, are you telling me to kill somebody if the purge existed? Wonder if there's any crime out there that won't get you targeted in a future purge. And the answer is, yeah, sure. There's tons of crimes that you can commit that would benefit society. Filling potholes without a Jacob permit. Jacob said mass genocide. Trespassing Stop. on a private beach to pick up trash. Ooh. These are victimless crimes, but they're not going to make you rich. And if we're aiming for the perfect purge, well, we need it all. But what? What is a victimless- I would loiter. I would loiter. I would- Stand in front of the target and not move. The shittiest crime in the world, loitering. I would fucking stand somewhere on private property and refuse to leave. This crime that <laughs> benefit society and get you rich at the same time? Theorists, I thought about this for a long time. I looked deep inside of myself for a solution, and wouldn't you know it, I found that solution there, deep within me. In really? fact, I found lots of solutions what? deep within what me, solution, literally. Matt? That's right. I'm talking organ harvesting. Consider <laughs> no! Bro, Matt, Matt, you want me to harvest someone's organs during the purge? But selling it would also be illegal. I would have to buy and sell the organs in a 12 hours. I would have to be able to harvest and sell the organs in 12 hours. I would also need to have the capability to harvest someone's organs safely. I don't know how to do that. Consider this a legal. Hey, Joe, do you think I could count modding as volunteer hours? For sure. You could lie about that. It's probably not volunteer hours, but you could say it is. Just, just add, just say it is. The human just say you're helping me because I did a charity stream one time. Just say, oh, I was volunteering for modding or what? Yeah, just finally, just say you volunteered. Art is valued at a million dollars. No a fucking shot. No fucking shot. A legal, healthy human heart is valued at a million dollars. A oh, my bit rate's tanking. <gasps> Water for the sub. Oh no. Now, on any other night of the year, human organs wouldn't be readily available and you wouldn't be legally Who is gonna buy an organ from me? For a million dollars. Matt Pat. Okay. Okay, let's go through this, Matt Pat. I murder someone. 
I steal their heart. Who am I selling that heart to? Who is going to buy a heart from me for a million dollars? Allowed to sell them, but guess what? On purge night, it's no rules, just right. Just like an Outback Steakhouse. We know from, well, pretty much every purge movie, but let's call out purge election year, that a whole bunch of dead bodies just lie around in the streets until 7 a.m. the next- Oh, I don't even have to murder people. I can just be the cleanup crew. Matt Pat, now you're on to something here, man. Ah, huh. I don't even have to be immoral. I just have to harvest the organs of already dead people. That's also kind of immoral. <laughs> That's also very immoral, Matt Pat. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> Next morning, we see this very explicitly as Laney and Dawn spend the purge driving around in an armored ambulance, carefully considering who'd help. But instead of focusing on the living, what if instead we chose to focus on the dead? Could Laney and Dawn have found something that we could capitalize off of? I'm thinking so, because we could use that same armored ambulance idea to collect the dead. Bring out your dead! And bring those freshly killed purgers to hospitals. Or or at the very least, our gang of waiting doctors and nurses, where the organs in the body could then be harvested by trained Oh, you could actually just get dead-ass doctors to do it. Oh, that would be a W side job for a doctor. One time per year, he just harvest, <laughs> harvest organs. Holy shit. Professionals in proper facilities. Now, normally, this would be totally illegal. The commercial harvesting and selling of body parts is illegal in all countries except Iran. But on purge night, those concerns go out the window. Wait. You can harvest organs legally in Iran. Be totally illegal. The commercial harvesting and selling of body parts is illegal in all countries except Iran. But on purge night, those concerns go out the window. And you see, these organs are incredibly valuable in every sense of that word. In the U.S. alone, there are more than 113,000 candidates waiting for transplants. And many are willing to pay whatever it takes to get access to that life-saving organ, which has in turn created a black market for some of the stuff. This is especially true for kidney transplants. Humans are born with Yeah, but I don't know if the people here's the issue, Matt Pat. The people that need a kidney transplant don't have 450 grand to just shell out to me for me to hand them some random person's kidney. With two, but they only need one. So the selling of your second kidney to people who need it is something that really does exist out there in the world. And the idea of using the recently dead as organ donors isn't a new idea either. Either. People can sign up to be organ donors for after they die. And in China, inmates executed on death row were historically used as organ donors. So let's talk brass tacks. How much is one dead body on purge night going to I death? would steal thousands of vials of insulin. And then would you resell them? Yes. Well, unfortunately, we have to discount some of the most valuable organs right out of the gate. A heart is normally useless after death, so we're going to have to kiss that million dollars I mentioned earlier goodbye. The liver also breaks down pretty quickly after cardiac arrest. Rest, so we're not going to be oh, able to pawn that rip. one either. Some relatively rip. small ticket items will last a bit longer, like the skin, which collectively might be around $5,000. The I'm not going to skin someone alive for, for five grand. Matt Pat, okay? Corneas in your eye will be worth significantly more if undamaged at about $20,000. And those kidneys that I mentioned before, they're going for about two hundred and six. FN in my chat in all caps. I would. I would do that. $2,000. Not too shabby for an organ. We got two of, but the real- Oh, I would keep them? You would keep- What if they expire? Big ticket Cruises item diabetes. Here. Yeah, I know, but a thousand vials is a lot of vials. Bone marrow. Bone marrow is by far- far the most valuable substance by weight in the human body at an incredible liver king would buy bone marrow for me if i harvested bone marrow liver king would buy that bone marrow Twenty three thousand dollars per gram per gram and the human body oh boy does it have a lot of the stuff the average full-grown human male is walking around with about 2.6 kilograms of bone marrow in their body that is nearly 60 million dollars of bone marrow just sitting there in your chair right now. And here, some of you thought that you weren't worth that much. So this then begs the obvious question of why isn't everyone rushing down? Okay. Now, if the purge were real, this is looking more enticing, Matt Pat. This is looking more enticing. You are getting me more enticed by this. Theoretically, if there were no laws, the crime rate would be 0%. Yes. Are we not going to talk about the fact that Matt Pat knows a lot about how to commit felonies? Yeah, literally. 
The fact that Matt Pat knows how to harvest organs. I feel like that's something we need to speak about. Down to the hospital right now to sell off a tiny piece of their body and buy a new house or something. Well, in most states, it's illegal. In California, for instance, you can be compensated up to $3,000 for the procedure. So there is an upper limit to what you can how be- How would some- How are they going to harvest my bone marrow? ...legally from this sort of stuff. And you see, for as huge as some of these numbers are, that's the overall rub. These are the real prices of these organs. Million dollars for a heart, quarter million for a kidney, a bunch for bone marrow. But in reality, if you were to sell this stuff, they're not netting that high of a price. According to medical transcription estimates, the average price of a dead human body is likely going to be more around $550,000. Still, half a million dollars for each person that you pick up off the street? Not too bad. On Purge Night, those streets are paved in gold. Fleshy, cadaverous, recently murdered gold. And that, my friends, is the recipe for the perfect purge. Like I said, in the U.S. alone, there's currently over 100,000 people waiting for organs, but only about 14,000 organs get donated every year. But with this plan, A, there's no- Matt Pat, where are the people that need the organs getting the money to fucking pay me? Are you just gonna say that's not my problem? How the hell is somebody gonna pay me 400 grand for a fucking kidney? I'm just gonna have a reason. What am I gonna walk up to their doorstep with a fucking kidney and just be like, here, it's, I, 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 I just got this for you. No victim, because they were already dead in the street. B, you and your team of medical professionals are actually working insurance? to Insurance? It's not covered by insurance, because it's a fucking black market sale. It's during the purge. I would have just harvested someone's kidney. Save some of the people on that 100,000 person wait list and C, harvesting and selling organs to hospitals or on the black market or whatever you end up doing in that 12 hour window could net you a ton of cash. Maybe as much as $550,000 per body that my girlfriend just said, hey, Joe, Brooke here, your girlfriend, just wanted to let you know my car won't start so I can't go to work. <laughs> F in the chat for my girlfriend. That you pick up. See, most people might use Little the Cobra's bro for the sub. urge to settle vendettas or enrich themselves financially, but are these selfish people really doing the purge right? The purge is an opportunity to give the gift of life to otherwise hopeless people by circumventing society's red tape. For a connoisseur that's looking to purge perfectly, those 12 hours aren't just an opportunity to get rich. It's an opportunity to make a difference. And that is doing the purge Right. Well, making a difference would be me not selling the organs, me just giving it to the person, Matt Pat. I don't think I'm making a difference if I'm being stingy and making someone that is in dire need of a kidney transplant pay me half a million dollars for a fucking kidney. Like, I feel like that's like... That's not more. That's not me making a difference. That, my friends, is the perfect purge. But hey, that's just a theory. A film. Stop. Stop. For literally collecting dead bodies, this is a wholesome theory. It's not wholesome. How is this wholesome?